Well, howdy there, Internet people. Let's bow again. So today, we are going to talk about China, G20, and explanations for unknown variables. Because something happened, looks like it's going to happen, and it's, it, it's unexpected. And there are a lot of people trying to explain this unexpected development. Okay, so what is the development? It does not look like the Chinese head of state is going to attend G20, which is an international forum primarily focused on economic matters. This is unusual. I think most people expected the Chinese head of state to attend. Um, Biden was like, you know, I'm disappointed, but I'll see him later. Something to that effect. Him not attending has led to uh, people speculating as to why. The first reason is uh, there is growing tension between India and China. We mentioned the maps recently, and there's a territory dispute the G20 meeting will be in India. So obviously, that's why he didn't want to go. Okay. Another one is that Biden's going to be there. And China and the United States are experiencing, let's just say, a rough patch in their relationship. So that's another explanation. Another is that they don't want to answer any questions about their current relationship with Russia. Yeah, okay, that works too. That's, that's another possible explanation. And then uh, still another is this is a Chinese power move to try to play up BRICS, which is in some ways seen as a competitor, but that, that's more of a competitor to G7 in my way of thinking anyway. Um, so there, there's another one. Um, and then there's the idea that, well, he's just gotten too big for his britches. Uh, I think the, the foreign policy statement on it is that he has developed an emperor mindset. And he thinks that foreign officials sh should come to him. I mean, okay. Um, and then there's the simple answer. This is primarily an economic forum, and China's economy is in a little bit of a stumble right now. So which one is it? And you have debates over this right now. You have people debating which one of these reasons is the real reason that he's not going to show up. I want you to think about you being invited to a dinner with your friends some event, and you had to work late the night before. You don't really feel that well. There's a show on TV that you want to watch. You don't really like the restaurant, and there's going to be somebody there who you don't actually like. Also, you're broke. Okay, which one of those reasons is the reason you didn't go? Probably a combination of all of them, right? All interacting together. Foreign policy doesn't exist in a vacuum, right? So the real reason is probably not a reason. It's probably a combination of reasons. Uh, this is something you see a whole lot when people are talking about foreign policy. They're trying to look for a singular reason for something to have occurred. Most times, it's not one thing. It's a combination of a whole bunch of things that leads to an unexpected development. When things are running as they should, foreign policy is pretty predictable. Um, it's a lot like how political parties act. When things are, when things are operating the way they, they're supposed to, it's pretty, it's pretty predictable. There's not a lot of surprises. So when a surprise occurs, people want to explain it. Generally speaking, 
people want to find one reason. It's almost never one reason. It's generally a combination of different things. If you want a different example of this, think about all of the debates you've seen over why Russia actually invaded Ukraine. And there's tons, there's tons of explanations. It's probably not any one of them. It's a combination of several of them. A lot of the debates, they really don't matter because both people are right. Both of these things factor into it. This is important to recognize because this is one of those things that can lead people into information silos, can lead people to start following uh, rabbit holes and get to a place where they're consuming a lot of bad information in an information silo. Because once you lock into one of these reasons, let's say BRICS, he's avoiding this. He's not going to go to this because he wants to put more importance on BRICS. Okay? That may have something to do with it. But if you chalk that up as his only reason for doing it, well, that kind of means that you'll start assigning a lot of other a lot of other moves to that same motive because you you start to accept that as the thing he really cares about the most, even though you may not have any actual evidence to suggest that. Don't look for a single motive. Um, and this goes to U.S. politics. It goes to foreign policy. It goes to your own personal life. Most times, there is more than one reason something unexpected occurred. Um, if I had to guess which is most important, it's probably the simple answer. It's an economic forum. And China's economy is kind of... It's, it's bumpy right now. It's, it's probably that as far as a main motivating factor. The simplest answer. But I'm willing to bet all of this other stuff might play into it in some way. Don't, uh, don't get caught up trying to find the one piece of the puzzle when you know that it's a whole puzzle and there's a bunch of pieces. Anyway, it's just a thought. Y'all have a good day.